It's no wonder David Robinson was named one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history. He was Rookie of the Year, an eight-time All-Star. He won the NBA scoring title, block shots title, rebounding title, Defensive Player of the Year, Most Valuable Player Award in 95, and a world championship four years later. His incredible career with the San Antonio Spurs will end at the close of the season when David retires. David, 14 years in the NBA. It's been a long career, a lot of wear and tear on the knees. Has it gone by quickly, though? You know what? It feels like it flew by. I, feel, I still feel like a kid in, in my mind, you know? And I'm surprised when my body doesn't respond quite as quickly as it used to. And I'm thinking, okay, wait, uh, I'm not a kid anymore. You know, I, all the fans are coming up to me now, and they're saying, man, I have your poster on my wall. I grew up watching you play. What do you mean you grew up watching me play? <laughs> okay, am I, I'm getting up there a little bit. He's getting up there for NBA standards, but the 37-year-old clearly remembers how life changed after serving his military commitments in the Navy. Everything was going my way, you know, a lot, a lot of endorsements. Of, I was playing well. I mean, I first year in the league, and you know, I'm all NBA team, and uh, everything you could think of. You know, you have the house, the money, the uh, fans, uh, but, uh, but I wasn't at peace, you know, and I knew that. And, and that was when the Lord really grabbed me and showed me how much he had loved me all this time and how I hadn't responded to it. And, and, and I think that was the one thing that kind of pushed me over the edge and, 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 uh, and helped me give my life to Jesus. I just fell on my knees and started crying. I said, God, I'm so sorry. I, you blessed me incredibly. You give me so much. You give me everything I have. And, and I've never honored you, never, never thanked you, never anything, really. Um, you know, I've been like a spoiled kid in the house. You're just blessing me, and I'm just running around doing what I want to do. And I said, from here on, Lord, I said, everything I, I have is yours. I, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say. I, I just prayed. I said, Lord, just, just let me walk with you. Let me hold your hand. Let me, let, me, let me just be your child. That was June 8th, 1991. And the very next day, God gave me this incredible hunger. I would just get in my word and read my Bible like four or five hours a day. And I just, I mean, I was so hungry to know who he was. I, I, I didn't realize before that that I knew almost nothing about God. And as I read, the Bible just jumped out the pages, came alive to me. And it was, you know, it was a, it was a transforming experience. I mean, I just, I got to love God, really love him as a father. And, uh, and so, you know, I'm running around asking everybody, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you guys doing something? You know, this is great stuff. God is real. As years passed, David's faith grew, and he continued to dominate the game. But he was known as the best player on a team that couldn't win a championship. Then the Spurs drafted another talented big man, Tim Duncan. David would need to put his ego on the shelf. Duncan was the team's new superstar. Yeah, did I struggle with it at times? Yes. Um, and even now I still do. And I know, you know, physically, I don't do the same things I did at 24. But still I even struggle with it mentally at times. And I think, the, and the Lord just teaches us that we have um, a place, you know. Yeah, it's just like, you know, Bible says you have a place in the body of Christ. And maybe your place isn't up in the pulpit. Maybe your place isn't in front of everyone. Maybe your place is at the door ushering. Or maybe your place is, is in the home teaching your children. Who knows? It, and it's not a glamorous place necessarily. It's not what you thought maybe you should be doing. But uh, it's, a, it's a part of the body of Christ and it's important. And, uh, and that's what I feel now and especially after winning the championship I, I understood it more you know it was a it was such a rich thing for me even though I wasn't that headline guy the MVP guy it was such a such a joy to fit the pieces of the puzzle together and to see God's faithfulness over the years take us from here to there David could play a few more years even nearing 40 he's one of the NBA's best big men but he's confident about his decision there's nothing sad about it to me. I mean, I've, you know, I've been blessed, and I know the Lord has other things for me to do that are fun, that are fantastic. Uh, but this phase of my life, which has been so exciting and so out there, you know, with lots of travel, lots of uh, media, and right in the public's limelight, um, it's, it's, you know, it's time for that to come to an end, and it's time to move on. San Antonio's east side is a community in decay. Many of the streets like this one are lined with condemned buildings that once served as crack houses. It's a tough place for a child to grow up. And David Robinson says they deserve a better future. Most kids are scared when a seven-footer struts into the playground. Not these kids. David's their buddy. These are the students of David's independent elementary school, the Carver Academy. 
It's been David's dream to build a school that stresses discipline and faith for kids from low-income families. David has personally contributed $9 million to provide scholarships and complete its construction. Going to the Naval Academy, I was always big on the discipline, discipline. I like the discipline, you know. I like the sense of being a part of something greater. You know, it's not about you making all the money you can make. It's about you serving your country. And, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to do on a smaller scale with these kids. I wanted them to understand, you know, God has placed you here for a reason. He's given you talents for a reason. But, but he wants to take you somewhere. You know, just like the Bible says, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. And these kids are my arrows. And, and so I'm going to shoot them out there. They're going to go. It's our responsibility to forgive when other people do things to us. It doesn't matter what they do. If they hit us, we forgive them. Right? If they hurt us, we forgive them. They're going to accomplish something. And it's not necessarily always for their glory. It's not necessarily always about, oh, how much money am I going to make? Am I going to be successful in the world's eyes? I mean, who cares? You know, you're going to be successful in God's eyes for sure. Oh. Yeah, good job. Oh, yeah. I'd rather be out there moving for God because, I, you know, I, you can't stand still. You cannot. I mean, it's... It's a, it's a love, it's a passion, and God didn't stand still and leave me out there. And, and it's the same passion that I think he's given me for other people. God, what? I think a lot of times your actions speak as loudly, loudly as anything you say. And, and these kids, more than anything, I think they know I love them. Even with all your involvement with this school, the front of the building says the Carver Academy. Why isn't it called the David Robinson Academy? Well, uh, yeah, I didn't want to name it that, really. Um, you know, there's, I'm still a work in progress. You know, you get, you get a guy like George Washington Carver. He's, you know, just an amazing, uh, amazing man. And it's so, you know, it's a better name than my name, that's for sure. You know, I'm, I'm, you know God's still doing some stuff with me. And hopefully when I'm finished, my name will be worthy of something, but, but not now. David's retirement is sure to be as busy as his NBA career. He'll continue to raise money for the school, which will eventually have 300 students from pre-K through eighth grade. When you build a school from scratch, you really um, have a lot of work to do. See, I wish I had the energy y'all have. But since 99% of our kids right now come on scholarship and they pay a minimal tuition, we really need to, to raise funds for our endowment. That's where our, our biggest challenge lies right now. All this and three sons of his own. And being a dad has helped shape David's relationship with God, his heavenly father. Here's your father who has been gracious the whole time. Same way you sit there with your children and you feed them the bottle and you change their diapers and you're there with them, sitting up with them every night. And then one day your child wakes up and says, you know what, this guy who's here all the time, he loves me. And so one day the, the kid wakes up and says, Daddy, I love you. And, 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 and so you have a choice to make, just like that child has a choice to make. When you find out your father's been up there the whole time blessing you, watching over you, and taking you where, you, where you're supposed to go, um, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to stop and say, Daddy, you know, I love you. You've been here the whole time. Man, you're awesome, you know, and, and the rest of my life, you know, I'm just going to bless you. You know, I'm going to honor you as my dad.